Hi again, 649, and we're looking live at the capital of Indiana, which was Ted Cruz's last stop in his race to the White House. He told supporters last night that from the beginning, he would continue as long as there was a viable path to victory. But last night, he lost to Donald Trump by a wide margin and dropped out of the race. Meanwhile, Bernie Sanders takes Indiana's Democratic primary, but his win over frontrunner Hillary Clinton won't change their race. Sanders remains far behind the former Secretary of State in the delegate count. A very good Wednesday morning, everyone, and thank you so much for waking up with the Valley today. Kyle Bosch here with Lisa Bedeau as we get started with nonstop news and weather all the way up to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. And we start with some breaking news that we've been following for you this morning in West Fargo. A train derailment there. Two engines and five cars off the tracks on the railway that runs into strata concrete along 12th Avenue Northwest. Now, all of the cars are still upright. The cars are filled with rock. No hazardous material is involved. Here's a picture from that area. No information from BNSF as of yet, but we are hearing a rail track may have been torn off. There are no traffic problems being reported right now. No injuries also have been reported. Coming up on 651, time to get a look at weather and traffic on the ones. And we start with meteorologist Robert Hahn, who's filling in for Lisa today. Yeah, lots of sunshine out there, just like yesterday, but unlike yesterday, not going to see a whole lot of winds. Current temperature 35 degrees. Feels more like 29 with those winds out of the north and northwest at 7 miles per hour. They'll continue north and northwesterly today, 5 to 15 miles per hour with an occasional stronger gust. Frosty up in Langdon, 28 degrees there, 39 feet for Falls and Bedette, 36 in Wadena. We're going to see these temperatures start to rise fairly quickly as we head through the rest of this morning with lots of sunshine. There are your winds, and again, they will remain light throughout the day today. And Hardly a cloud in the sky. We're going to see some mostly sunny skies as we head through the rest of the day today. And with no clouds around, you guessed it, no precipitation. Northern Plains, quiet right now. It's not until you get well off towards the east or west where we're seeing the uh, precipitation. The Great Lakes seeing some showers and thunderstorms, some strong thunderstorms making their way through the Florida Peninsula and off towards the west. Some rain up and down the west coast. For us today, as we head through the day today, we're going to warm it up nicely into the 60s in most locations, a few low 70s, not out of the question, and even warmer still, some 80s possible in far western North Dakota. Northern counties may hang on to some upper 50s up in the uh, Lake of the Woods and uh, Bedette area. Late tonight, early tomorrow, could see an isolated shower, rumble or two of thunder far northern Minnesota. Elsewhere, some cloud cover making its way through our Minnesota counties. And as we head through the overnight hours tonight, not nearly as cool as this past night. As we head through the day tomorrow, Quite a warm up, a taste of summer for most areas as we warm on up into the 80s. Maybe far northern valley might be in a pocket of some low 90s as we head through late tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening as we head through tomorrow evening and across the rest of the region, cooling it down into the 60s and 70s. As we head through the rest of the next seven days, some upper 60s on your Wednesday, some mid 80s Thursday, warmer still Friday. Cool front will spark off a few showers and storms and usher in some cooler weather for the weekend. Mom's Day. Looking pretty good, mid-70s with lots of sunshine. That's another look at your weather. Let's get another look at your traffic with Al Ahmed. Good morning, Al. Good morning, Robert. I am northbound on Interstate 29. And let me tell you something. This stretch between 32nd Avenue and Main Avenue is an absolute adventure. A lot of uh, traffic very heavy out here right now. We have a lot of lane changing going on. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I've never driven in a NASCAR race. But it certainly has that feel. And folks are clipping right along as well. You need to be really careful here. Lots of congestion around these ramps. Southbound I-29 is uh, fairly active as well, but nothing like it is northbound. Uh, getting here this morning, I popped back out on Interstate 94 and I-94 traffic pretty heavy as well, particularly westbound. Drive extra carefully today. Remember, we have a lot of construction in and around the FM metro area. We make sure that you allow those workers to do their job and not get hurt. Back, uh, we'll visit with you again here in about 25 or 30 minutes or so. Al Ahmed Valley today traffic. It's now six minutes before seven. Those traveling on I-29 north of Fargo will need to get going a little earlier this morning. Traffic will be cut down to one lane in each direction starting near Argusville. It's all the start of a major road project between Argusville and Gardner that will go on all summer. Besides those losing lanes, losing a lane, speeds will be reduced to 65 miles per hour in that work zone. And another warning for your warning for your morning commute. Cass County Highway 20 and the Wall Street Bridge is going to be closed down for about the next six weeks, all starting today. Const Construction crews will be finishing a flood protection levy on the Moorhead side of the bridge, but detour routes have been clearly marked. 
And we're following breaking news north of the border this morning. An entire Canadian city, 61,000 people, have been forced to leave their homes because of a massive wildfire. The evacuation of Fort McMurray, an oil city about 270 miles northeast of Edmonton, Alberta, started last night, causing lines of cars on the highways. So far, no deaths or injuries have been reported, but fire officials say homes are on fire in the city. The massive fire doubled in size in just 24 hours. Around 150 firefighters are now battling the blaze with 70 to 80 more on the way. Officials say the dangerous conditions that fueled that fire, high temperatures, low humidity and high winds, are expected to continue today. A level three sex offender who caused a community uproar two years ago is moving back to Moorhead. Moorhead police say Eric Fanning will be moving to the area May 10th when he's set to be released from the Lino Lakes Correctional Facility. Police say Fanning has a history of sexual conduct and contact with adult female victims. Fanning will be living in the 900 block of 14th Street South. When he first moved to Moorhead in 2014, dozens of people showed up at a community notification meeting held by police. But Moorhead police say they are not planning a public meeting this time around. The superintendent of Thompson, North Dakota, says that he will be releasing unofficial results of a bond referendum vote a little bit later this morning. John Mouse does tell us there was a record turnout for the vote. Voters were deciding on an $11 million proposal and 60% approval is needed for passage. If approved, the money will be used to build new classrooms, a new technical education wing, and other improvements. The family of Andrew Sadek, the student who died while working as an informant for the Richland County Sheriff's Office, now says they will be filing a wrongful death lawsuit. Yeah, the Richland County Sheriff's Office and Deputy Sheriff Jason Weber will be named in the suit, but more names may be included. This is video from August of 20, 2013. It's of Andrew Sadek signing up to become an informant, and in it, Weber tells him that if he doesn't sign up, he will get jail time. Now, Sanic's family attorney, Lance Block, talked last night with 630 Point of View's Chris Berg to talk about the upcoming lawsuit and says it is not likely that Andrew would have ever went to prison. If you would like to listen to the full interview, just go to valleynewslive.com and click on the 630 POV tab. Emotions were running high over the weekend for a Thief River Falls teen who was competing in her first ever pageant all an effort to inspire people just like her. Hannah Inge collapsed on stage and actually had a seizure during the interview portion of the international Miss Teen Minnesota pageant. Now this is video of what happened and when she uh, fell down right there. Yeah, she did though get back up and was back on stage within minutes to share her story. Hannah had two concussions one week apart when she was just 12 years old that left her with a brain injury. She has seizures during intense emotions. That was one of my many seizures. This is what I've been facing for the past four years. Any change in emotion, this is what happens to me. I want to speak for those who can't speak, those who don't have an opportunity like I have right here. I got back up, I succeeded, I ignited my spark. Thank you. An absolute hero. <laughs> Hannah ended up placing as second runner up in the pageant. She says she eventually wants to be a pediatric neurologist so she can help kids just like her. And if you'd like to see the entire story, it is a great one. It's posted mm -hmm. at our website, valleynewslive.com. It's been months since his time on The Voice, but Blind Joe is still a star in the Red River Valley. He is releasing a brand new album tomorrow, but this morning he is live with us right here on The Valley Today with Christy Larson. Good morning, guys. Yes, we're sitting here with Blind Joe, excited about the release of his album tomorrow. Pre-sales already going on, but again, this is thanks to the fans, and that's why it's called By the Fans for the Fans. Absolutely. We can't thank you guys enough for all the love and support uh, ever since The Voice, and I've had a lot of fans uh, in the Fargo-Moorhead area and surrounding areas since before The Voice as well that showed support, and uh, both financially and uh, and non-financially, for the record. I, <laughs> I couldn't think of the word that I was trying to say there, but yeah. we really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for the support and, uh, uh, you know, buy the record, please. <laughs> we worked really hard on it. It's, it's really awesome and I'm really proud of it. Yeah, you have nine original songs on it, yeah. some cover songs on it. You're not only going to be releasing this tomorrow, you're going to be at the Red River Valley Fair, Blues Fest, We, we Fest. So you can go online, check out his stuff, but we do have a link up on valleynewslive.com. Click on the hot button to go and buy his and we're going we're gonna to carry you guys out with a song. Yeah, let's let's get song started. Together, shall we? Let's go. do it. 
Just take those old records off the shelf. Christy getting involved, and we'll hear. We'll go back to Blind Joe in just a second, but we do want to get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook for you. On average, we throw away a quarter of this. The answer is bread. Remember, you can take part in our question of the morning on our Valley News Live Facebook page. That is our time on the Valley today. Let's go back and take one more listen to Blind Joe. <laughs>